Welcome back to Black Acre Ranch, everybody. So today what I wanna go over is a little bit about why we chose this Dan user front end loader auger. Um, there are a number of options for augers, a um, number of different ways in which you can dig a hole. Um, we wanna cover a little bit about today because I've used most all of these now in our experiences, why we ended up with the Dan user um, and how that compares to just the other types. Um, from the post hole digger, a three point hitch, a one man or two man gas powered guy, to even just this tractor mounted one here. So I wanna cover those different types, some of the advantages, the annoyances, the goods, the bads, the uglies um, of what we found when we've used them and how we ended up with this one. So let's kind of get started and go through these one by one and see where it leads us and why I would use one versus the other even now that I have almost all of these types. So let's get started. Hole digging type number one is a post hole digger. Now these are the classic mechanical ones. I've seen them when I was a super kid. Homes have these type. You know, they're the typical ones you stick in the ground, you spread it out, and you pull the dirt out. Um, they come in limited diameters. They're just manual contraptions. They work, they don't need gas, they don't need lube. Um, pretty much they're just there. So they are the cheapest. I, you know, I don't know if it was like 60 bucks or 70 bucks that I got hours. Um, you know, they're not too expensive, but they come in different styles. You've got shovel ones that kind of pull a lever. You've got all different types. The basic point is the same. You manually stick it in the ground and you open it and you move your dirt. Um, we used these when we did the original pig fence. And our posts were only four inch posts, I believe, four inch diameter posts. We were only going so far. Um, into the ground and so we just used that the entire time and we set about 13 posts I don't think it took too long But it was you know took a day to get all the posts set up um, And there's a couple of us working um, Things of that nature so I would use this and I found this useful if my posts are generally small That they fit within the diameter of the actual uh, post hole digger two if the dirt isn't super hard, if it's fairly easy to go through, it's fine. And third, third, if I'm not going super deep. The further you go in a hole, especially just the size of the diameter, you can only spread so far. So about when we started hitting two and a half feet, when you're hitting 30 inches, you're starting to really push how much you can get open. Um, and so, you know, you got to kind of look at those situations. Would I use it now? I would still use one now, only if I was in fairly movable soil. And if it was just like one post, maybe two, depending on the soil and the depth. So that's when I would use it. I'd say if that's all you got to do is a couple holes, go for it. It's not that bad. It's cheap. Get it done. Post hole digging option number two is doing a gas powered auger. Now we've used this a lot especially when we started doing our pasture fences. Um, this is pretty handy, it's pretty cheap. You know, something like this, gosh, I'm trying to remember, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, something like that. We picked it up from like Tractor Supply or Northern Tool or something along those lines. Um, they've got an auger. Now they, they have different bits, sizes that you can put. Ours, I believe is a six inch. Um, Cause our posts that we're putting in at the time for the, the pasture was only five inch posts. Um, so I went with a six inch, you can get them bigger. Now they come one man augers where you're sitting there and you're just doing this all by yourself. You have two man augers, which you have two people holding it. It could be even better. Um, so this was really useful on a larger scale than the post hole digger, okay? Now some of the things that I didn't like about this one is it's only got so much of a depth. And when we were using this out in the pasture, we could only get to really, gosh, 32 inches, maybe 36 if we're pushing it, and that's burying this sucker deep. Um, and, and so, you know, if that's deep enough for you on a typical cattle fence, they're only gonna be five feet above ground, three feet below, you're almost there at the depth. So maybe that's not such a bad idea. Um, ours is a little bit different. I'll talk to you a little bit about that later. So. We could go pretty far. Um, the struggle I had with it is, gosh, it it starts to wear the beat on your arms and so forth, going and picking it up from the bottom if it gets suctioned in there. Um, it only goes one direction, 
And so you've got to just manually do it. The most we did in one day through our doing our posts with this guy is, I think it was 16 or 18 posts, but we went about 42 to 46 inches down typically. But um, you still probably have to have a post hole do digger with this. Um, it works, it's fine, but you can get through more difficult soils, but if you catch a rock or if you catch a root it's not gonna go through, it will just jerk your arms and my, my elbows, I swear, were sore probably from two months doing all these different holes around this area. So, option number two, if you're doing more than just a hole or two, it is a little bit more robust to go through some extra dirt. But on a large scale, if you're trying to do 20 or more a day, you know, it, it can be a beat down. A little bit more expensive, might be worth it for five to 10 holes. You know, I would still keep it, I would still use it. Again, depending on what kind of posts and how deep I'm gonna go in the soil conditions. Option number three. This is the three point mounted auger that goes on the back of a tractor. So anybody who's probably out there doing pasture fences uh, maybe on a larger scale, um, we'll be using this option. Now these attach to the back of the tractor and specifically to the PTO, which is the power takeoff. Um, it's a shaft down here that just rotates right off the drive line and it goes at a set speed, it goes at a set direction. Um, these are a little bit more expensive, but they're probably twice to three times as much as the single gas powered ones. Um, but it's pretty customary for people to use this and this is the most common type. At the beginning this is all I thought was the option, right? After you get past the one man and the post hole digger I thought well if you have a tractor this is all you do. So these are nice because they're still fairly economically cheap and I think that's why most people use them. So out of this list this is actually the only one I have not purchased and I don't know if I really intend to purchase it now that I have the Dan user. So why did I not purchase this one, a three-point mounted auger, and just go straight up to the Dan user? And here's a couple reasons why. For one, this sits on the back of the tractor. If I'm on the back of the tractor, and I'm trying to use this three-point mount sitting back here, and I'm trying to line it all up, this is my position. I am continually looking backwards in my seat the entire time. Operating it, I use the three-point mounted levers here, and I have to continually be looking backwards. If I line it up, I go back. If I'm operating it, I look back. This is not the position I want to be in when I have a ton of posts to do. You can do it, it's just, why? You know, if you don't have to, why? A second reason why I didn't want to necessarily use this one is it connects to the PTO. The PTO, as I mentioned, goes just one direction and it rotates the same direction the entire time. And so your actual auger will only rotate one direction, which means if you get it down in the bottom of a hole, you can get some suction down there in the bottom of the hole, and then you're trying to pull this out, and you can't sometimes get it. And I've seen people have to use pry bars and other things and leverage this sucker and try and yank this thing out that got suction down there. Well, if they could just rotate it in the opposite direction, they could just pull it right out, no big deal. Um, so, one direction rotation, you know, I wasn't a fan of ever getting it stuck, and I know I have some clay to deal with. So, the other part with that also is that there's only so much lift force back here on the three-point hitch. Um, you can get more breakout force from the front end loader than you can over here. Third reason, probably, that I didn't really like this is that I have a lot of terrain. And back here, you're mounted pretty square to the tractor, so as the tractor is tilted, it's tilted. I didn't think that there was much, as much maneuverability with a three-point hitch. It does have some linkages that it will kind of hang down, but then it's kind of set straight. I mean, that, that's it. I mean, it, it just goes that area. So I didn't think it was as maneuverable on hills, and we do have some terrain. Number four, I almost forgot this one. So the fourth reason is, is when you're mounted back here, you are in the middle of your tractor this direction. And so when you're going up to do a fence line, um, you are probably about three feet distance off the fence line if you're a horizontal, like parallel with it. So you have to swing your tractor 
to get the butt end facing the actual fence. Um, and so it's not as easy to actually line up right next to a fence and drill and kind of stay going down their way. You have to keep curving in to some degree more so because it's located centrally within the tractor. So those are four reasons why I kind of said, you know, I don't kind of like this idea. It is kind of economical. It's not super expensive. You can pick them up at any big box store, no big deal like tractor supply, that kind of thing at Woods or anybody. But, um, you know, was there a better option? And that takes me to the fourth one. All right, here's the fourth option. And this was the Dan user. This is a front end loader auger. So this is just an auger, kind of like styled like that one man style, but it's off the front end loader on the tractor. And so this kind of hangs up here and it's a beast, it's huge. Okay, this is the Dan user EP615. This is what I elected to go for instead of the three point hitch mounted auger. Um, and, and there's a number of reasons. So looking at the disadvantages of the prior one that we just talked about, this one is offset to the side. I'm standing in the center of the tractor in the front end loader and this is off to my right. You can see it's right about here with equal with the wheels. Um, this allows me the ability to get up closer to the fence and not have to turn so much to get into every single post hole. So being offset has been really handy to actually get into some of these things as we've been doing these lines. I don't have to spend so much time maneuvering. Along with that same idea, a beauty of this as well is that I'm sitting forward. I can see everything in front of me, proper position in a chair, and I can just do everything. I don't have to be turned around looking backwards the entire time. Another reason that this thing is nice is because being offset, I can just tilt and look between the, the hood and the front end loader arm here, and I can see straight to the ground. If this was put right dead center, it would be a lot more difficult to actually see where this is contacting the ground. So being offset has its advantages, and I like that. And the fact that it's here, I can just look straight forward and do everything. Another plus that comes along with this is the fact that it's as big as it is. This is able to reach depths that are been, I've been able to get down 48 inches. Now admittedly the dirt's coming up here, you can see the remnants <laughs> of dirt sitting up here and I'll dig this, but that's the pile that builds up outside the hole that I'm pushing down in. But I can get 48 inches down and not have to really do much with any kind of post hole auger or anything else like that. This is a nine inch and this has been great, nine inch auger, and it's just 48 inches. Something else that's an advantage I think of having this is on the front end loader, you have the downforce you're able to put from the front end. So if you're in a place where there's like iron lignite or something that's going through that's gonna take a little bit more, you actually have the ability to put a lot of downforce, which you don't see with a three point hitch. You can't put a ton of downforce with it. Also, you have the ability to lift it up and get it out of a hole at the same time as being able to go backwards and rotate. And the reason that happens, and that's because we have these third function valves. These valves here have an inlet and a forward and a backwards. So with my third function remote, I'm able to go various different directions. I'm able to back it out of a hole if it's too much. But either way, these arms here are able to put a lot of force to pull it out. In fact, when I was doing one of these holes, I got into a bunch of clay. I pulled the thing out after I got down pretty far and the back end went woof, lifted up, and I was afraid actually I was gonna flip at one point. So you can pull up a lot, and you can push down a lot, and you have that ability with a front end loader mounted auger, like Dan user has, as opposed to a three point hitch. Another thing that I liked about this also is that you have the, the functionality of your front end here. This will tilt, and when this tilts, it changes the angle of the front end or of the actual auger unit. So when I'm going down a hole and I'm arcing down and it's coming back, it's changing the position of the actual auger. Um, but merely by just rotating up here, I'm able to tilt out further the head and stay more straight. And I don't have to drive forward, drive backwards. I can affect the tilt by just tilting the front end whatever you call this front section here, and that helps position 
which makes it a lot easier that I'm not having to do short movements all the time. Okay guys, this is just some of the reasons why we chose a Dan user. We can get really low down, a lot of depth. <clears throat> I can sit straight forward, I have good visibility because it's offset to the right. I can also get close to the fence lines without having to maneuver my tractor so much into that and pull back out. Um, I can go different directions. I have a lot of down force, I have a lot of up force. I have, there's just a lot of advantages of Dan user. Now, I'm not paid to do this, all right? I'm getting not sponsored in any way, but I do know the phone number of the guy who probably owns the company, and if you happen to watch and you do want a little bit of sponsorship going on here, I'm totally accepting of that. So anyway, you know, I'm here just to kind of give you my honest opinion, and if it sucked, Honestly, I'd tell you it sucked. So the one man auger, that sucks, all right? This, part of the reason we invested in this, it is more expensive. Um, gosh, this is, they work through dealers and the dealer pricing can vary, but this is at least four or five times the cost of just a three point mounted auger. Um, but the reason partly I'm investing in this is I do have sections where it's hard soil. I have to go really deep you know, trying to get 48 inches down, and I've got a buttload of posts to put in. Like, oh my gosh, I will be doing this forever. In fact, if you watch my channel, you'll probably see me put in a lot of posts. But I have miles and miles of posts. So I could either invest in paying some guy to do the stuff before, which that ain't happening, or I can invest in something that makes it really simple, and that's where I got this. So. That's why we got it. So if you're asking the question about what kind of post hole digging options you have, those are four of them. You've got your post hole digger, you've got your one man gas powered or two man gas powered unit, which chucks you around a lot. You've got a three point hitch mounted auger, and then you've got a front end loader auger like this, which is the most expensive. Do what you need to do for your budget, okay? Look at the scale of your project, how deep you have to go, what size post you're using, all of these things influence what you can afford and what's, what makes sense. This makes sense for us because we have an enormous amount of posts to put in and we've got to go deep because we're, we're going to be holding bison. The fences are taller, the fences are stronger. As I told you with, a, with that one man auger, the most we did in one day was I think 16 or 18 posts. We did with this, in two days we put in 75 posts. I didn't have any sore muscles. I think my wrist was a little bit sore just, but, but you know, whatever, right? So this is why we got it, right? Do what you can with what you got, make do, but give it some thought. I don't see these advertised a lot. I had to do some research and all of a sudden just found that it existed. We're happy with it. Hopefully you're gonna be happy with whatever you choose, but uh, make good choices. All right, catch you guys later. With you, I wanna stay with